Have you ever heard of uh, out of body experience? Outer body experience is a phenomenon that people observe their body uh, from a different point of view. It's often from above and looking down your body lying down in the bed, like these pictures. And surprisingly, 10% of general population have had this experience at some point in their life. And experience being outside of your body is so bizarre, so people often associate this experience with the paranormal phenomena, such as astral body or near-death experience. However, we now know this experience is actually either, uh, has a cause in brain. So scientists in Switzerland discovered when they stimulate electronically a certain area of the brain of the epileptic patient who embedded uh, electrodes in the, inside their skull. They successfully induce out of body experience. So, out of body experience is the an illusion brain creates. And interestingly, now that actually the same group of scientists found uh, this, this experience can be also induced by our virtual reality. So, in this video, uh, an exper uh, sorry, the participant wearing the headset watching her own back through a camera standing behind her. And an experimenter starts stroking her back with a kind of a stick. And when this tactile, the stroking, one is actually tactile, one is actually visual, uh, synchronize each other. The person starts feeling her own body is in front of her, not the, her physical location. So this is actually the study using virtual reality to induce a typical body experience. Another example using virtual reality to tackle with the weird experience is uh, experience of reality. So this picture is a screenshot from a kind of re 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 recent video game which called Watch Dogs 2. And a human generally has a really uh, sensitive to what is real and what is not real. Uh, however, in some psychi psychiatric condition, which messes up this experience of reality. For example, depersonalization syndrome or disorder. The patients who are uh, suffering from this disorder have a delineated feeling of reality. They don't really feel uh, the reality as real. Or like schizophrenic patient or as a neurological uh, patient has a, they're sometimes suffering from a false belief. They're basically using the ability to monitor actual reality. To tackle with this problem, uh, colleagues and I have developed an experiment platform called Substitutional Reality System. In this system, we made the participant to believe uh, live reality, even though they're watching the pre-recorded video. And here I want to emphasize, we, don't, we didn't really try to make a real environment like a video game industry. But rather than that, uh, we basically make a plausible situation that people feel this is real. So, so far I just show two examples that there are so many atypical experiences and some of the, them are so interesting to study, but all caused by brain. And my approach is simulate these a typical experience using virtual reality setup. So we can actually study these uh, phenomena you, you for uh, in the, inside the lab and using like a healthy adult. So now I just changed slightly topic from our, so I, I, I have been talking about the more like a body and the space and the surroundings, but how about the visual experiences? For example, this kind of most famous uh, visual optical illusion called Kanizsa's triangle. This, tri this triangle, you can see in, in the center, doesn't really exist in the physical world, but basically brain make up the triangle. But maybe this is a bit boring because you might have seen before. There's another 
maybe a bit more ex exciting example. So this illusion actually f discovered quite recently, and it's called flash phase distortion effect. So what you need to do is just fixate your eye on a central cross, and the two phase aside are both alternating in certain reason. And what you are supposed to see is basically distorted phase, like maybe the eye is bigger, the mouth is smaller, and a bit like a monster ogre-like face. So to me, this is quite interesting, because of course, yeah, I didn't say that, but the two faces the side didn't really change. But these illusions, optical illusions, are of course designed to be like that. But there's actual patient or condition that people naturally in daily life see this kind of basically distorted visual experience called visual hallucination. So the visual hallucination has really actually diverted in, in its contents. For example, this is a just it's the, like a geometric pattern when you just make a, some pressure on your eyeball. Or the similar type of kind of spiral geometric pattern can be induced by taking some psychoactive substance. Or uh, Parkinson's disease, dementia patient also see this kind of complex hallucination or similar kind of psychoactive substance can induce more complex. This is maybe the face drawn by someone taking a mescaline. And more interesting is even there are some people who have an optical disease, so losing the sight, starts having this kind of complex hallucination on the losing sight. And this is called Charles Bonnet syndrome, uh, named after this 18th century philosopher. So as you can imagine, I try to simulate this with virtual reality. So now we have artificial perception system, not a biological perception system. And you can just imagine like uh, if you put some image, pixel level image into your input, and some black box here, just function F, there convert this image into a rubber. So now this black box is more like, I can just make more details, just layer network. And again, if you put some information, pixel level information, their network can answer, okay, this is dog or cookie. Actually, I cannot know which one is cookie or dog. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we can, uh, what if you invert this process? So now start from the highest layer. It's just a category, like a rubble, and making a pixel rubber image. So this I call artificial hallucination, or Originally, the Google research teams called this a deep dream. And you might have seen this video or image before, but I just applied this uh, algorithm to uh, this famous uh, Van Gogh house picture. So basically, it's going to be like this. So as you can see, his face is going to turn into a, a more like dog face. And the point is, this is completely drawn by an artificial system, artificial perceptual network, and not, not human designer or engineer made it. And also, I want to focus your kind of, uh, all the kind of details of the dog are actually there. So it's starting from the like a categorical uh, information, but it actually creates like a textual, detailed image. And what I have done is, of course, I just made a 360 video version of this deep dream or visual, uh, artificial hallucination. So this is, is the video originally uh, recorded in a beautiful University of Sussex campus. And as you can see, all the people walking by turned into like a mostly actually dog or bear. Or someone, some can maybe spot some like a polar bear on the wall. And of course, the participant can actually experience this from a first person view uh, using head mounted display. So, yeah, of course, the, the video and the virtual reality version of artificial hallucination is quite in, in, impressive. It's fun to see. But how to actually use it? How to apply it to the actual science? Uh, I, as I said earlier, visual hallucination has so many different causes. Like some are neurological, some are psychiatric, some are even maybe psychological. 
Uh, I think most typical one is using, yeah, as I said, psychoactive substances. But as you can see, these two brain image is basically showing uh, two different state of the brain. One is uh, yeah, normal awakening state, and uh, this side is uh, someone taking uh, uh, LSD. So as you can see, like a uh, whole brain state is totally different between awakening state and uh, normal state. We can't really say what actually causes a visual hallucination in this kind of condition. Well, it may be the same in the neurological disorder people. So to actually disentangle the situation, the visual uh, artificial hallucination is useful. So we actually uh, conducted some experiment. One of them is this. So we use uh, the questionnaire called Alter State of Consciousness Questionnaire, which was actually originally used for these uh, psychedelic studies. And in this graph, uh, the so orange line is the, the rating, the su subjective rating for, uh, so the question is basically you see a pattern of color or you're losing yourself or time is distorted, this kind of, uh, kind of typical experience when you take some psychoactive uh, substances. And blue line is the rating after uh, people exposed into the artificial hallucination system. And as you can see, it's apparent similarity between these two, which means like uh, our system actually phenomenally simulate actual visual hallucination. But still, maybe people would say, uh, why you use artificial system to, to study the biological, our actual consciousness? So I just try to look back kind of history of science to find a kind of similar example. Uh, 50s, uh, 1950s, uh, John von Neumann, he's uh, maybe known more in the uh, further of the modern computer. He was working on a machine which, cap which is capable to reproduce itself. And he basically called this a universal constructor, which basically can construct any arbitrary structure once it's written as a kind of blueprint. Here it's actually shown as a string. So what he actually made is the separation between the machine and the data. The machine itself is really complex. It's hard to, difficult to copy, but it has a lot of function. In, uh, instead, the data itself, is, itself doesn't really have any function, but easy to be copied. So his work for the, the artificial self-reproduction is separate these two. And meanwhile, actual DNA double helix was discovered by uh, Watson and Crick, as you know. And DNA is actually, yeah, genetic code, and uh, it's really key part of the biological cell reproduction. And the point is, I wouldn't say that Neumann's work actually contributed to discover of DNA structure. Rather, I, I would say, I'd like to say that Neumann's work actually more like a theoretical contribute theoretical insight for what actual biological reproduction is. And to my approach for uh, these kind of atypical conscious experience is, so actually it's going back to the air life. Uh, I try to make generating subjective experiences artificially using virtual reality and artificial intelligence methodology. And I could say, so this way, we can actually study uh, biological system better by kind of finding the same shared mechanism between the artificial and the biological system. And uh, yeah, consciousness is a huge theme, the biggest theme in, this, in science and philosophy. And for a long time, philosophers discussing about consciousness and uh, scientists try to make a theory about consciousness, but always it encounters a kind of difficulty that is actually subjectivity. So subjective nature of the consciousness. It means, in other words, we cannot know the other's consciousness. It's just private. But using the methodology combined virtual reality, AI, this kind of state of our technology with their actual subjective experience, we can finally test 
some philosophical question or theory in luxury of subjective point of view, which I, which I found extremely exciting moment. Thank you very much.